a young man got up to speak in his church and he said to the deacon as he was going into the pulpit, I never know what I'm going to say when I go up into the pulpit. And uh, the deacon was heard to whisper, and no one ever knows what you have said when you come down. <laughs> well, if you like to turn to Galatians and chapter 5, and we read again about the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5 and verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying one another. And we are looking at the fruit of the Spirit, which is the very character of God. He wants Christ to be formed in us for the very character of God to be revealed in us, for again the Word to be made flesh. And the fruit of the Spirit is nine facets of God's love, nine varieties of the love of God. The fruit of the Spirit is love. God is love. Joy which is love rejoicing, peace, which is love resting, patience, which is love waiting, kindness, which is love stooping, goodness, which is love acting, and what we're looking at this evening, faithfulness, which is love trusting. And the fruit of the Spirit is not an option for the believer. It's a command. Love is a command. Love one another as I have loved you. Joy is a command. Rejoice, and again I say, rejoice. Peace is a command. Live at peace with everyone. Patience is a command. Be patient with everyone. Kindness is a command. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Goodness is a command. Do good to those who hate you. And we'll see this evening that faithfulness is not an option, but a command. What God commands in his spirit, he enables to be fulfilled in the life of his child. In the little book of Lamentations in the Old Testament, we read in chapter 3, verse 22 and 23, something often found on calendars of scriptural verses. You'll know it well. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. In Isaiah 11, the messianic passage, talking about the coming king, it says this, Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash round his waist. Isaiah 25 and verse 1, O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name. For in perfect faithfulness 
you have done marvellous things, things planned long ago. <coughs> All that God has done, he has done in wisdom. He is the only wise God, perfect wisdom. And all that he has done, he has done in perfect faithfulness. Marvellous things planned long ago. In Psalm 36, verse 5, we read, Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness to the skies. Sometime just go out and look up, perhaps into a cloudless sky, and just remind yourself God's faithfulness reaches to the skies. Look at Psalm 89. There are several verses that mention his faithfulness. God is a faithful God. It's Psalm 89 and verses 1 and 2. I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. With my mouth I will make known your faithfulness throughout all generations. I will declare that your love stands forever that you established your faithfulness in heaven itself. And then verse 5, The heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness too in the assembly of the holy ones. Verse 8, O Lord God Almighty, who is like you? You are mighty, O Lord, and your faithfulness surrounds you. It's like a sash. It's like a belt around the Almighty. Your faithfulness surrounds you. Same Psalm, verse 14. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Love and faithfulness go before you. In Psalm 92, verses 1 and 2, we read, It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High, to proclaim your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. And Psalm 119 and verse 90, your faithfulness continues through all generations. You established the earth and it endures. God is a faithful God. There's no getting away from his faithfulness. Psalm 143 and verse 1. O Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my cry for mercy. In your faithfulness and righteousness, come to my relief. The great truth of the Bible is that God is faithful. Here is something quite puzzling. Why is it that we are so ready to trust one another and other people, although we realize that people let us down, and yet we're not quick to trust God, who is so faithful and will never let us down? There's something rather perverse about that. When the Apostle John on the Isle of Patmos saw heaven standing open, he saw a rider on a white horse. The rider was King Jesus called the Faithful and True. Amen. 